Guys, we have to talk about a volcano in the Pacific Northwest again, Mount Rainier. Rainier. I know a lot of you have complaints that I said Mount Rainier, but as a European, sometimes you want to pronounce it like that. Strange things are going on because there is a new chart that has been released by the USGS. And when you see it, maybe you will understand what I mean because it is a lot different than anything they have seen before. And they have two earthquakes now in the higher ranges. Mount Rainier keeps me up at night because it poses such a great threat to the surrounding communities. Tacoma and South Seattle are built on 100 foot thick ancient mud flows from eruptions of Mount Rainier from millions of years ago. The summit is very cold, lots of snow, glaciers, ice, and when it eventually erupts, that is all going to melt very quickly and head towards these towns below. And it keeps coming. It keeps going. If we look at the news or social media, lots of people, is it going to blow? Is it going to erupt? Well, guys, that's the one thing. I told you in my other video and I urge you to watch it. The biggest threat that comes from Mount Rainier is lahars, volcanic mud flows. And they can happen at any time without an eruption because there's so much loose material. You have to think about a landslide coming from a mountain like they're coming in Switzerland, Blatten, and in many other areas. And this shaking could trigger something like that. And that can go like 30, 40 miles into the highly densely populated areas. But since this swarm is so different, it sounds like they are not ruling out that something more could be brewing underneath that volcano. You have to read between the lines a little bit. And again, once you see the graphic, I think you'll understand what I mean. That earthquake swarm at Mount Rainier or underneath Mount Rainier has produced right now more than 340 earthquakes. They call it minor seismic events, but we had a 2.5, a 2.1, 1 point somethings, a lot in this range. Yes, it sounds small because it's not like a tectonic or a fault line that produces a five, six, seven. But for a volcano, it's telling us something that something's going on. For example, the eruptions in Iceland, we see earthquakes in the two ranges and then an eruption is happening. So it's underneath the mountain in Washington state and it started just on Tuesday. The earthquake swarm refers to a cluster of seismic events. That's what you also see here in that map that is happening quickly in succession. That's why they call it a swarm in the same area at the same spot. Tuesday, 1.29 a.m. in the morning, that's when this swarm was started. And the quakes are happening between 1.5 miles to four miles beneath the summit of Mount Rainier. And it cannot be felt on the surface because they're relatively small and the largest is some say 2.5, 2.3, something in that range that was also on Tuesday, but we had another one in the two, over two on Wednesday. The swarm, they said yesterday, did slow down. It did. And it looked like, oh, is this really gradually dying down? If you see yesterday's post of the USGS. But then it stays quite stable into today. So it started with like 26 tremors per hour, but they say it has dropped just to a few per hour, but it still keeps going. Usually there are only nine earthquakes per month underneath Mount Rainier and swarms are happening, yes, once or twice a year, but totally different from what we're seeing right now. The ongoing earthquake swarm is larger than normal and has absolutely outpaced every swarm that we've seen before. And I want you to show the chart that I've been talking about right now. So the 
USGS shows us this comparison to the 2009 swarm and the 2025 swarm. And they have released this update today. They say this is an update on the ongoing seismic swarm that has started on July 8th. Seismicity is continuing at low rates. And as of 9 a.m., so that's when they release this update. On July 10th, the Cascades Volcano Observatory and the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network have located 334 events since the start of the swarm. We are at over two, uh, 340 quakes so far. But what they're saying, many more earthquakes are happening and have occurred. They can just not measure them and they cannot be located. That's what they're telling us. So the 340 something are only the ones we know about. Largest event, 2.3 July 8th in the afternoon, roughly at 3 p.m., what they do say is that they still have to observe a lot to understand the entire volcanic cycle at Mount Rainier because they have only monitored the volcano well since the late 1980s. And since the last eruption is 1100 years ago, they do not really have precedent how that volcano behaves and what it does prior to an eruption. And they do say these earthquakes are a reminder that Mount Rainier is an active volcano. They say that based on our observations, but they're not 100% sure, we think the most likely cause of the earthquakes is water moving around the crust above the magma chamber. They say that this observation comes from swarms on other volcanoes and observations of older swarms here at Mount Rainier, but they cannot be certain 100%. They're also saying 2.3 is the largest so far, but future events could be stronger. And the last swarm in 2009 lasted for three days. And usually these swarms that happen once or twice a year, they last less than a week. So they say that for right now, we do not have a good estimate on how long this swarm may last and whether it will intensify or it will die down. They have noticed an increase in rockfall and icefall that is coming, but they say that has something to do with the weather, with snow melting, not with the earthquakes. So far, they think that these earthquakes are classic volcano tectonic earthquakes, but if there will be a change in frequency content such as hybrid or low frequency earthquakes that may indicate a change of activity. And they also say if this current swarm will last more than a week, that would be different, totally different than the last swarms. What they're saying is they cannot see any changes in ground deformation or other monitoring data. And that is good because that would indicate that the volcano might be waking up. But there is a but. There is a but. I'll get to this, guys, because there is still some kind of danger. They say that, again, look at the chart here. They're writing, the swarm now surpasses the 2009 swarm in terms of magnitude, total events, event rate, and energy release. They still say the cause of the swarm remains consistent with the circulation of fluids along pre-existing faults that are located beneath the volcano, which is basically considered background activity of Mount Rainier. So there's currently no indication that the swarm is associated with magmatic unrest. So there's currently no indication that can change. Of course, they say they will continue to monitor the activity, locate, trying to locate the earthquakes and will provide additional information. But what I found really, really interesting is that the USGS has commented on a comment from a viewer that, that asked a question underneath this chart 
First question was, what about the risk for lahars and mudslides? And the USGS says, yes, there's always a risk at this volcano. And uh, it is basically elevated now due to the seismicity. I've reported about this in my last video. This is also not what I want to talk about too much. USGS was asked, how far in advance would we know of an imminent eruption? USGS says, it's very hard to say. Volcanoes can percolate along for months to years with high level unrest. For instance, lots of seismicity, ground deformation, gas emissions, etc. before they start erupting. They can also go back to sleep after percolating for that long. And sometimes eruptions can come up quickly. In general, based on a database of global activity, the longer a volcano has been dormant, the more warning it gives before erupting. So that's good news for Rainier, given it has been 1100 years or so since the last magmatic eruption. And then they say for the Cascades in general, Experience indicates that we're likely to have weeks to months of building unrest before an eruption happens. But then they say, but there's no guarantee of such timeline. So real-time monitoring networks are the key and they do have them at Mont Rainier. And then they say, we have sensors deployed around the mountain. So what they're basically saying, it can happen as a surprise. They don't think so. They hope not. But they also tell us, you never know. Although there's so many small earthquakes, the alert level of the volcano has not been raised. It's still green. And the USGS says, yeah, that's because the quakes are not a result of magma movement. That they seem to be sure of. They say, we do not see an indication that an eruption is likely. If the style of the seismicity changes and an eruption starts to look like a possibility, then the alert level would be raised. So to me, it looks right now, there is not an imminent danger of any eruption. So all these news, it's about to blow, yada, yada, yada. I don't think so, but again, we always have to keep these lahars in mind. That's the real threat for this densely populated area. And that's why the scientists say it is basically one of the three most dangerous volcanoes in the US amongst like Hawaii and of course Yellowstone. But you know, this one, because of the landslides slash mud flows called lahar, that travel very, very far. Should there be an eruption, the lava doesn't travel that far. But the Lahars, Oating, Tacoma, Olympia, Seattle, there's the hazard map behind me. They're having evacuation drills. 45,000 students just did have an evacuation drill where they would have to go because the Lahar can arrive in Ording in 45 minutes. For example, it doesn't take long. They're coming down at high speed. That's the biggest danger from that volcano right now, not the actual eruption. And that's why the seismic swarm, we need to pay close attention to it especially for people that do live in the area. And that's what the Pacific Seismic Network has also posted. Be vigilant, pay attention, it could happen. So as always, guys, I will keep you updated. Stay tuned for more. Check out the videos in the end screen. So much is going on. If you want to support the channel, check the links in the description. You can buy me some coffee. Leave me a message. I'll answer with a 30-second video message. We can chat with each other. Click the join button to become a supporting member of the channel for behind the scene and private stuff from me. And thanks for your supers here. Thanks for watching, for commenting, for your heartfelt, nice comments, guys. Stay safe, okay? Promise me that I'll see you here probably end screen in the next one or go to my channel page. Check out the videos, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.